All right, everybody, we are back once again, out here at the disc golf course filming some content. It's been a little while since I've been out at the course. Feels good to be back. Got more of a normal video today. So this weekend we have, um, in our city, we're having a regional college disc golf qualifier. It's happening in our local area. Super exciting, a bunch of guys I know are playing in it. It's an event that I used to play in when I was in college. Anytime college disc golf is taking place around me, it always floods me with the memories, gives me some FOMO, it makes me wonder like, Ah, man, I wish I could still be out there. I wish I could still be playing competitive college disc golf. It was so much fun and a great time in my life. And beyond the experience of playing, I kind of just wonder like, do I still have it? Could I still compete out there with the college kids if I had the opportunity to play? So today I'm taking a little look back, okay? I went through, you know, I was reminiscing, going through my old rounds um, as a college player on UDisc, and I was kind of surprised by some of them. I was a little better than I thought I was, to be honest. I think it more so just shows how much I used to practice back then versus now, um, because some of the scores I looked at and I and they really surprised me. One of those scores was actually out here at the Liberty Campus course where I played a lot of my rounds. It was probably the course I played the most. This course is known for having kind of a contrast between the front nine and the back nine. The front nine, super wooded, very tough to score. The back nine, a lot more open. That's where the scoring is done. Historically, if you get out of the wooded nine, and you're even par or better, you're doing really well and you're set up to shoot a pretty good round. Well, I was looking back and it seems like back in the day, I was actually able to shoot under par on this nine. So I went back and I found my best score through the front nine here at this course. And it's actually three under par. That really impressed me. And I really thought to myself immediately, could I even get close to that today? So that's what I'm out here to do today. Today, I'm gonna play the nine holes. They have changed slightly. And I will say, I think they've gotten a little bit more difficult so keep that in mind, but they have the same vibe. And I'm gonna play and I'm gonna see if I can still shoot three under through these nine holes. And honestly, I'm not sure that I can. I think it's gonna be very difficult, but I'm very competitive, especially when it comes to competing against my former self. So we're just gonna jump into it. Also, I do wanna mention, thank you so much for the support on last week's video. It was my first video back after a couple weeks since I just had a baby and I was blown away by the support. The video did really well. And I just wanna say thank you to everybody who watched that and supported it. Um, it's really great to see that my audience kind of sticks around and uh, was ready to watch the newest video, even though I was gone for a few weeks. So hopefully you enjoy this one as well. All right, hole one's a bit more difficult than it used to be when I was in college. This one, I gotta get past that tree line up there and just try to penetrate into the woods and it kind of sits up on the hillside a little bit. Uh, not a super difficult shot to make par, but it is tough to birdie this hole, whereas it used to be easier because the old tee pad was like 100 feet in front of me. So just trying to get into the woods, make sure I don't make a bogey to start the day. Okay, that was a terrible throw and an amazing kick. Okay, simple up and down from here. Just wanna make sure we don't roll away because this hillside is notorious for run or rollaways. Might as well call them runaways. I've got this uh, Lucid Ice Judge back in my bag. I needed it. Okay, should be a tap in for our par. Not a bad start. Nothing wrong with a par on this hole to start. It's just a way harder hole than it used to be. It used to be like a must get to start your round. Now it's like, just get your par, don't do anything stupid and, and move on. It's, it's all about survival on this nine. Today's video is sponsored by Mudwater. All right, as some of you may know, I recently had a newborn baby. And with that comes lack of sleep and the need for energy. And here's the thing, energy drinks are not the best solution. You're, all that caffeine can make you jittery. It can get you some serious crashes. And that's why mud water is an excellent alternative. Mud water is super, super simple to make and it gives a great boost of energy with natural ingredients. Each ingredient in this blend was added for a purpose. They've got cacao and chai for a hint of caffeine and a little bit of that hot chocolate flavor. Lion's mane for focus. Cordyceps to promote natural energy. And both chaga and reishi to support a healthy immune system. Now, I know what you're thinking. Natural energy made up of mushrooms called mud water. How does it taste? I actually quite like it. I think it kind of tastes like a chai tea latte, which I really love. Like any kind of healthier uh, beverage, it was a little intimidating at first, but once I tried it, I realized I loved it. Making it is super easy. You just take a scoop of your mud water. I like to throw it in some hot water and mix it up. Like I said, has a great taste. I think those of you who are coffee drinkers could find this as an easy alternative. You still get that 
warm, yummy beverage. You can make this a ton of different ways. They offer other products like creamers as well to help sweeten things up. And I really like it just as it is as well. Smells good. Yeah, it does. Plus, this thing is healthy, okay? This is certified USDA organic. It's Whole30 approved. It's vegan approved. It's gluten free. It really checks all those boxes. So if you're looking to kick the energy drinks, find an alternative to that coffee and those jittery moments and those crashes that are associated with it, like I was being sleep deprived with a newborn baby, Mudwater is a special offer that they're hooking up with our viewers. If you go to mudwater.com slash foundation, you can get started for just $29. That's mudwater spelled M-U-D-W-T-R.com slash foundation. You can get started for just 29 bucks. Thanks again to Mudwater for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna enjoy this mug. Bye. <laughs> hole two is one of the weirdest shots you'll ever see, and it's a weird hole in general. Um, there's a right pin here, but for whatever reason, they've decided to go with the left pin for the longest time now, which I think is way worse. Basically, the tee pad is facing a giant clump of force. There's absolutely no reason for it. Um, I guess you could argue there's like this like four foot gap that nobody would ever try to throw, but like the actual fairway goes directly to the right. So the best way to throw the shot is to force something really overstable immediately into the right gap and try to get as left as possible to give yourself a putt. And it is birdieable. It's just not great. Um, luckily they got new tee pads, so they're wider now. So you can kind of like take a more of a hyzer line rather than having to flex it as much, but it's still kind of weird. Get inside of that. Okay, that was pretty good. I can't tell if I went deep or not. Gosh, the airplanes are so loud. This actually ended up being a great drive. Got a little bit sneaky and got rewarded. Unfortunately, <laughs> kind of got to. I got to pick a side here. I think this is my best bet. Dang it! Well, good tree behind the basket. I got a little too focused on the wind and just pulled it. Dang, that, you can't miss those. That's not good. There's not enough birdie opportunity to miss 15 foot putts, even if they are tricky. Hole three, another really hard one. I'm telling you, there's a reason missing a putt like I just had is not good on this nine. And that's because the opportunity, there, there'll be a few like pretty good opportunities later in the nine, but especially these early holes, you just wanna grab a couple for insurance because there's so many opportunities to make bogey and this hole is a perfect example. We're going downhill, really tight gap, and the basket is sitting on a cliff. So difficult to land this disc anywhere near the basket for a putt. And if you hit super early, you're throwing a scramble shot straight down the hill at the cliffside basket. So it can be very hard to get up and down. You really just wanna, if you're gonna do anything, blast it long. So I'm going Supra because it meets the line. I can hyzer flip it. And if it goes long, you know, not a big deal. Difficult shot though, really difficult shot. Too much hyzer, just keep going. Oh gosh, bad kick. <sighs> Too much hyzer, high left, and it kicked left, which means not a fun scramble coming up. Yeah, this is exactly what I was worried about where the basket is like way down there at the bottom of a slope and it's constricted, there's a lot of trees. So it's gonna be tough to have the best of both worlds where I actually make it through the gap and also sit near the basket. This is. Just gonna try and float my putter down there and probably gonna need some luck. Yeah, and I didn't quite get it. I almost turned it through that gap, but it's gonna be a bogey. Just have to lay it up and take our medicine. This hole is so frustrating because it's not a long hole, but I mean, you have to get really close to the basket to even wanna run a putt when you're going downhill like this. So I'm just trying to slide it up to the basket. Easier said than done. I mean, that carries like, wow. I got a good tree backstop. Like the disc carries so far down that hill. If that wouldn't have hit that tree there, I think I would have still gone like 25 feet. This has been a less than ideal start so far. If you want to score out here, you typically de need to start like one under through the first three and give yourself some momentum because the next couple holes are going to be pretty tricky. All right, I backed myself into a corner now. I really have to start scoring and store scoring quickly. Hole four is doable. It's a par three. It's like a slight turnover the whole way, but I haven't been super great at this hole lately, so I need to dial something up because if I get too much further over par, it's gonna be over quick. I like that. Oh, I didn't quite turn it all the way. Dang it. I came out of my hand really nicely, but 
it just kind of faded out at the end. The birdies are gonna, I, I need to just hang around right now. I need to hang around, maybe steal a birdie to get back to even. And then I just need to finish really well because the last few holes on this course, I believe the next two, this hole is pretty easy. Next hole is pretty tough. The one after that is pretty tough, but I should be able to make pars. And then, oh man, that only leaves two holes. I'm gonna need to steal two holes. Eight and nine though are par five and a par four that are both very gettable. I don't know, I need some help. All right, once again, we're kind of left with an awkward layup. This one's a little more doable though. I'll manage to hit a tree no matter what. If there's a tree, I'll figure out a way to hit it. I will. All right, I don't wanna to have to be this way on hole four, but I'm pretty sure this is a must make. Just gotta have this. Wow, okay. Stepped, stepped up when I needed it there. I still need to get things moving though because one over par is just not any good right now. Hole five, kind of make or break. This is big opportunity here because this is a par four, it is scorable, but this also can be a huge number and the end of my chances of making it to 300 par. I have to get out this gap, very difficult drive. Once you do that, you have a blind hyzer approach shot with trouble kind of all around. So it's not easy, but getting far out the gap sure makes it a lot easier. Wind is in my face. I'm gonna try to go stalker here. Oh, it did turn, Just keep turning. Wow. Oh, good kick too. Okay, that, I played the wind just right there because that was a lot of hyzer and a little bit left of my line, but the wind did come through, flipped it over and that got way out the gap. So I actually might be able to see the basket from there. That's, that's a very good drive. The round may be back on track. Okay, so now this is where the difficulty of this hole really comes through because that drive was really good but because it's slightly uphill to the basket, I can't see the basket. I have to just kind of play it by feel. And if you miss left, there's a grouping of trees right next to the basket and you have no putt. So this is, this is very difficult. Just trying to pick a tree to aim at, honestly. Okay, I don't hate that. Okay, the round is saved. Really good upshot, easy tap in birdie. We're back to even par. Even par, like I know this hasn't been a perfect round, but a lot of times, like I said, it's just about surviving the woods. Now today I'm trying to kind of, I have to a little, be more aggressive and attack, but being even par through a very difficult hole five is not, it's nothing to be sad about. And I have a good chance now, you know, I just need to get three of the last four. All right, so of the last four holes, this is probably the most difficult. The other ones, I feel like, I feel like if I can steal this one, I have a really good chance of doing this. Uh, and getting to three under. This one is a really long tunnel shot. It's like 360, 370. Um, and it's, yeah, just straight tunnel. So I'm gonna try and play like a flat baby flex line with the, with the destroyer here. Oh, I might've done it. Stay turned, just kick right. Okay. Mm. It's still well short. Dang, I almost hit it perfect. It's gonna be a very long putt. Left myself with a lot. This is even further than I thought it was. So it looks like unless I can magically birdie the last three holes, I won't say magically, it is doable, but unless I can do that um, or somehow make this, might not, might not be happening today. That was pretty sad. I used to be good at jump putting, I think. Not anymore. Well, let's see if we can run the table here. Three holes to go. All right, this is definitely the easiest of the final three, so I gotta lock in and get it. Par three, just down this tunnel. Uh, it's a pretty easy forehand, as long as you hit the gap, everything kind of skips up towards the basket. Hey guys, it's Trevor from the future here. Didn't realize my microphone had died, so enjoy this calming music as you watch me throw the next couple shots. Don't worry, the mic will be back in just a few seconds here. Um, beautiful forehand there, beautiful birdie putt, sure wish. Could have heard it, hit the chains, that would have been nice. Oh, and here's a drive on the next hole. Par four, beautiful drive as well. Okay, Mike's coming back now, sorry about that. Apologies for the audio list holes there. Um, I did not realize that my microphone had died. Sorry about that. Um, okay, I'm a little pinched, so I now have to throw kind of a like high stall Anheuser to try and get around the corner and get me in a position to get up and down. Not the best spot. I did get stopped at the end of its flight, but that got around the corner. I think I have a chance. Okay, great position. The shot is for all the marbles here. Oh, perfect. That's it. Okay. 
Okay. All things considering, that green can be very difficult to stick on because of how slanted it is. I think I'm like 25 feet. That's pretty good. Okay, we're at the final hole. It's eye of the tiger time because somehow I actually have gotten to two under despite not doing anything that great. Maybe what I'm realizing is I wasn't that good in college either. In any case, the final hole here is a short par four. The tee shot, you just have to get forward and right, as right as you can. And then it's kind of a tricky short up shot to a spider tree basket. Very doable, I'm going super off the tee. Wow, very big fan of that drive. Hopefully I can find it. I had a lot of trouble finding discs in the leaves today. Okay, the drive was darn near perfect. If I can execute this up shot from just inside of 100 feet, we've done it. I thought that was perfect. It kind of rolled around the spider tree, so hopefully I didn't get blocked out. All right, bit of an awkward putt here. I'm gonna have to work for it a little. All right, well, there you have it. Thank you so much for watching this video. It turns out I can still play as well as I did in college, um, at least at this course and on this day. I, and hey, like I said, this course is actually a few strokes harder just by par. Um, well, I guess that makes it even out, par is relative. I still feel like the course is a little bit harder than it was back in the day. So being able to match it, I'm impressing myself. Also a little confused because I feel like that wasn't that difficult. I mean, I played okay, but it wasn't that difficult. And I usually come in here and get destroyed in the woods. So maybe I've just been approaching it the wrong way. Maybe I've been too timid. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this week's video. I got another one coming next Monday. I've got a bunch of really fun ideas I can't wait to show you. If you have any suggestions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you.